Hello, everybody. Welcome to the, the World of Control channel. Uh, I'm Mohammed, and today I want to uh, model the dynamic of an inverted pendulum. And also, I want to model it in Simulink. Uh, let's see what we have. Okay. Uh, the inverted pendulum is a system that has one degree of freedom. And uh, the mass of the system, we consider it as a pointed mass with M. Um, and the length of the pendulum is considered as L. And the generalized coordinate that we describe the system with is theta. Uh, the gravity uh, acceleration is... Um, minus g for uh, in in uh, respect to the y axis of the coordinate and we have a tau moment uh, that is actually tau uh, uh, torque that is the control that we want to consider it as a control input and we want to control the system with this tau here. Uh, if we draw the free diagram of the system, we see that uh, we have the um, weight force mg here that is applying to the system and a, a torque tau here. Uh, if we write the Euler equation for the system, uh, we have the sigma m of o is equal to i o theta double dot. That means that the uh, summation of the all of the torques and moments that are applying to the system is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by the acceleration. Uh, if we uh, consider the system, we have a tau that is uh, counterclockwise and is positive. And also the weight of the mass, uh, the weight of the pointed mass has the uh, negative uh, torque around the uh, point O. Uh, that is minus mgl uh, sine of theta that is equal to m square m l square multiple by theta double dot m times l square is the moment of inertia of a pointed mass that has the mass of m and the distance of l from the point that we are uh, that we are calculating the moment of inertia uh, from from this equation of motion, we we will achieve this equation that is needed for uh, transferring the equation to a state space equations. Uh, if we consider the theta and theta dot as x one and x two as state space uh, variables, we will have the state space equations like this x dot up x dot one is equal to x two and x dot two is equal to one divided by m l square times tau minus g uh, divided by l times sine of x one. Okay, now we want to uh, model these uh, equations in Simulink. I made a, a blank model in Simulink. Okay. Uh, first of all, we add a MATLAB function to the model to write the equations in it, the equations of motion. Okay. We I rename it as dynamic and I double click it, double click on it so we can go in it. Uh, 
Okay, change the name of the MATLAB function as dynamic. And the inputs of the of this MATLAB function is x and tau. And the output is x dot. We consider the equation as a system and we consider all of the variables and parameters as a vector. So we, according to this equation here, we have x dot one is equal to x sub two and x dot two is equal to uh, one divided by m times l square times tau minus g divided by l times sine of x1. Uh, okay. Now we can write x dot is a vector, is a two uh, times one uh, vector that is x dot one and x dot two. Uh, we need the constant parameters as m, l, and g. So I define the parameter as an input name params. So uh, we have m equals to params of one, g is params of two, and l is params of three. Okay, uh, we go back to the simulation here. This MATLAB function will provide our uh, dynamic equations. So I add a constant block for defining the constant parameters as m, g, and l. I consider m as, for example, 1.5 kilograms and g, we all know that is 9.85, uh, 9.81, sorry. And I consider the length of the pendulum as, uh, for example, 1.5. Uh, I use MUX to augment all of these three parameters into one signal. M, G, and L. And after that, this signal will be our params signal. The output of the MATLAB function is x dot. That is a vector. Uh, so we need to integrate. So I add an integrator to the model and I set the initial conditions as, for now, zero and zero. And then this signal will be our X signal that has the theta and theta dot in it. For now, as a, as, as a constant, I add a constant for the tau parameter that is our input of the system. And I uh, actually make it zero for now. So now I want to demonstrate the plots. So this signal has two uh, variables in it. So we need Dmux to unpack the signal into theta that is x1 and theta dot, that is x2. For plotting the signals, we use a scope block 
and I double click on it to make some changes in it. Let's wait until the scope open. Okay. From this part, I want to change some appearances for the plot. For now, and apply it to the function. In settings, I defined two signals because I want to show the both theta and theta dot signals into one plot. And I check this open at the start, what open at simulation start here. So at the, at, the, at the start of the simulation, we can have the both uh, plots that show the signals. Uh, the theta and theta dot are in radian. So I use gain block to do some transformation here and make the theta and theta dot to degree. So here we have theta that is degree and theta dot that is also degree. Okay, I save the simulation and after that with this run, we can simulate the system. The input of tau is zero and both of the initial conditions are zero. So I, ex I expect that both of theta and theta dot uh, be zero at all of the times. Uh, exactly. We do not see any differences in the theta and theta dot. Let's change the initial condition for the theta to be, for example, p minus p divided by two. And after that, we run the simulation. Now I expect exactly, I expect uh, uh, actually um, pendulum um, behavior here that is oscillating between minus p um, divided by two to p divided by two here. So we have 90 degrees and minus uh, negative mi 90 degrees that the system is oscillating between these two uh, actually uh, um, values. Okay, for now, for example, I add a constant for example, 1.1, 1. 1, 1. Uh, 0 0.01 value for the tau. And I run the simulation to see what is going to happen. Okay. Uh, no much, not much changes here. Let's add a big, for example, input. We know that the, uh, um, the dimension of the signals should be equal and we have to pay attention to the uh, constants that we are uh, applying to the system. Okay, we have five, for example, now five Newton meter to see what is going to happen. Now we can see that the oscillation is between 90 degrees to, for example, I think uh, 10 degrees approximately. Okay, uh, thank you that you 
follow this video, please subscribe to this channel. And in the next video, I will design different controllers for this system. Thank you.